Welcome to Narrabut of James Bill. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Well, I've got a few days of decent weather this weekend and I, my priority is to get all this done. Um, get the sides on, get the roof done, get the windscreen in. This is my windscreen. Um, so yeah, loads to do. I've got to do a few uh, adjustments to the frame as well. So uh, let's get cracking. Well, it's quite a cold morning. The canal's frozen. I mean, it's not very thick ice. But it's ice nonetheless. But you'll, be, you know, you'll notice that it never freezes on the edge of the boat. So even when, maybe in like the depths of the winter, when I show you, there'll be ice there. And that'll be water. Always. It'll never freeze up to the boat. But last night, I could hear the ice forming it's quite nice well this looks as messy as it normally does however this is actually quite all organized for the pram hood and everything i need to do so there's some webbing and stuff there knives screwdrivers those are all the button fixings push buttons those are the turn buttons that is um some kind of iron on fabric with stuff which i'm gonna see if i can get that to work velcro there's the bits i need and then round here, all the other fixings and stuff. My tap set, because I'm going to probably need that. Angle grinder with a cutting disc on it, because I need to trim down the alley. Metal rule, tape measure, should be good to go. That one there, actually it's that side there, is having three centimetres taken off that one. So it kind of twists a little bit more like that. And then that end there is having two centimetres taken off it. And I'll readjust those two fittings there. And then this is going to have two centimetres taken off it as well. The reason for that is because when Rob got on last night, his head came to about there. So it's still quite a bit of play in that. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Right, so I've trimmed this one down now, taken two centimetres off that, so I can put that one back onto this pole, but this tube here has also got to be taken off on that side. So I've made the adjustments to the rear part of the frame. I've kept the windscreen the same height, because I think, now I'm looking at it, I think uh, that looks about right. On the inside, that's measuring just over six foot there to the apex of the roof. We've got them angled backwards, so it's kind of, that angle there is not 90 degrees, it's about, what's it, 80 or something. So it puts a nice slope on the roof. It's really cold outside. You can still see actually that part of the cut there is still frozen. Yeah, there's still ice there. A boat came through a few hours ago and broke it all up a bit. But as a result of which, I've basically got my stove on all day. Um, it's on about 150 now, so it's not very high. Um, keep my tea hot though. But it just means I can come, kind of keep the back doors open and the boat maintains some kind of heat. I'm seeing now I've put the canvas back on just how hard it is to get these angles right. Because basically I've got it attached at the front. There's nothing in the middle, there's nothing at the back. And I've had to make the horrible thing of cutting the hole out there. Basically the, the rudder, or tiller, sorry, needs to be able to spin easily. So there's a hole basically in the canvas there. I might need to bring it a little bit further this way. So this, it's all taut in the middle. But there's a little bit more on that edge than there is on that. But when I pull that down as taut as that can go, so it's all kind of level with the rest, it's got these massive sags in the middle. So I'm wondering whether that is because of that span being too big. 
but if it is there's not much i can really do about it now but then i'm wondering when i put a seam on it and then attach it to the sides which then attaches to that i'm wondering whether both sides will kind of pull it together a bit i'm not really sure but what i've got to do now is put on a couple of buttons on that one there and that one there start trimming the fabric to size and then kind of work outwards from the center I'm wondering if that's the way to go well, i'm just cutting this excess off so i can put a little hem on it and then get that down to those buttons there I've done the same on that side as well. Yeah, so we're going a bit like that. I've taken the short trip to my parents' house to lay out this fabric so I can iron on a seam. Uh, I've got quite a uh, long expanse of material here, so this works out quite well. And once it's been ironed, it actually goes on quite well. This is PVC to PVC, so it kind of glues in. I didn't use end, end up using any of that fabric stuff in the end. The stove's still on, luckily, from last night. Look at this, the ice is... That is quite thick today. Yeah. Right. You know sun's out so it's gonna be a good day to do the pram hood cup of tea first well, good morning it's absolutely freezing outside and it is absolutely scolding in here the stove is at 380 celsius so yeah it's pretty pretty warm i've got a, uh, a kettle on there but this is what i did yesterday last night at mum's I managed to put a seam on this and it's worked quite well. I did use um, this bonding stuff before. I used some of that stuff, um, which is I, like iron on, and I've got an iron on board. And it's a decent one, but it didn't work on that stuff. But on this, what I've managed to do is actually bond the PVC to the PVC so I've doubled it over I've got myself a little hem on it and it's worked well it's quite nice so my plan is to put that back on the boat now and then before it all gets kind of too creased and then I've got to uh, work out basically where the high points are mark them all out and then I've got to come in and put in all of these turn buttons. So that's the plan, but, oh God, yeah, just making another cup of tea. It's gonna be constantly tea drinking today. In the morning, what I do is I smash up a couple of heat logs, chuck that in the fire, and it kind of gets all the coal really going again. Temperatures come down from where is it now? It's at about 250. Okay, I've put the roof on after having it hemmed. See there, on the inside actually looks quite nice with those lines there. Um, what I need to do is work out the high points now for these parts here to work out where, because right at the high point at the apex is where I'm going to need to put definitely one of the turn buttons there and then from there I can work out kind of 20 se 20 centimeter intervals for the other ones but it's really all going to hinge from this point here well that's been a bit of luck um I was just out here doing this a guy called Scott walked past who's got a wide beam just down there and says uh, I'm an upholsterer um, got a few tips for you. So I was like, bloody hell, perfect, man. Basically, he said the way to get rid of these bowed bits here is about dealing with the corners here. Now, this corner's not so bad, but these ones here at the back, 
what he said the thing to do is to basically continue that line across and lift it out. And you'll see if I do that, it takes out that curve. And he said then, basically I'm gonna have like a, a ridge at the top. But he said, I could also continue that line on the inside basically. Put it like that. Stitch it there. Stitch that bit to there. And it's the same deal. So that was absolutely brilliant. Right, I'm going to show you the issue I'm having with these turn buttons. Um, firstly, I'm doing at 30 centimetre intervals because then I might, if I need to put one in the middle, then I can, and they're not too, that distance there will be all right. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm having real difficulty doing these and I've got about 15 or 20 to do each side. So it's going to be, uh, there's a lot of them. The issue I'm having is the punch. There are three punches available. There's a... Um, hand grippy kind of hydraulic clampy thing which costs about 600 quid um and that's obviously if you're doing it on industrial level um there's a stainless steel punch that you can get which is about 150 quid um or there's this one which is 12 quid um this is designed by j clark marine based over in ireland um and they seem to specialize in these kind of fasteners and all this kind of stuff so he's designed this which is basically four um of the blades and then an oval bit and that corresponds with all the bits you need for this but essentially that's what i've got to create is that hole there for those four bits to go through and the hole the four bits are as sharp as you like the hole the oval bit is blunt so um i'm struggling he says do it in a magazine so i'll show you what i do basically open up a kind of magazine Mark it out first, I guess. Where's my pen? So I'm doing them in 30 centimetre intervals. Get my magazine. Then line it up so I've got enough play for the kind of the edge of that clampy bit. Make sure the fabric's all nice and level and basically smack it with a hammer. And in his videos, he's going through fabric much like this. And it's basically done nothing. And the edge of that, the blade of that bit looks knackered. And I've only done five. So the other thing I've tried is using a bit of oak. And I've made like a little jig bit in it, like an indent. So it can kind of go in there and kind of clamp it down a bit. But this is damn hard to line up and get right. Let's try that. think that would have worked yeah it's literally in the wood that's what it's done it's mullered it basically so I've now got to and there's nothing to grip onto it's not it's not big enough it's a bit annoying So I've got to trim it with a blade. And do that on each one, basically. So once the hole's done, I'll then poke that bit through. 
and then put on the clampy bit. Bend in the prongs. And there we have it. It looks okay and it works. You know, it works, but it's not a perfect hole by any stretch. So I think what I'm gonna do is go in at the end with a little sol with a soldering iron and just neaten up those edges and it will probably just um, seal the fabric a little bit. Let's get in there. We've got loads to do. Alright, next one. Okay, so the port side turn buttons are in on this side here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve on that side. This one's looking nice from the back. Obviously the light's not very good today, so. But it's fairly taut, that's all right. I thought it was gonna to come to a bit more here, into the corner, but it's not. It's gonna be at the back there. You'll see I've put a little um, turn in there. I've just got a paper clip in there holding it together at the moment, which isn't perfect, but that's kind of how it should be to help take out some of that curve there but I'll sew that in once this is in place. So now I've got to basically do the same on that side. Okay, so I've finished with the second half now. Right, I've put in all the turn buttons here from the uh, starboard side. So you'll see that one there, um, but I did it sort of quite quickly and what I did is I managed to punch it through and use this, the blade to basically cut a bit out of there because that is blunt as you like now. Um, and so it's created some kind of hole, um, not much of one. I'm just going through with the soldering iron now and kind of making that hole nice and neat. But also what it's doing is it's sealing the edges as well. So it's working quite well. Right, turn buttons are on both sides now. It's all the way along there to the front. I haven't done the front corner yet. I've got to work out how to do that bit. Kind of tucks underneath there. That's what she's looking like at the moment. Once the buttons are on the back, it'll kind of. I'm hoping it will pull it all in and tighten it up a bit. But what I want to do now is the side. So I've got to basically cut the fabric. So that's the top of the fabric there at the apex and the fabric then cuts down. It's basically that shape. So I'm going to lay it out here. The maximum distance I've got to deal with is, well, the, the fabric is 1.5 meters wide and the top to the bottom there, I think is about 110. So I've got plenty to play with. So cut it to size and then I can put in the top clamps. Well, I've got to iron the hem on, so I'll see if I can do that on the boat. That'll save me some time. And then put in the other parts of the turn buttons and then hopefully I can get that side on. 
that'd be a right result. Step one is to make the markings and cut the fabric, which took some time and kept getting in everyone's way. Once I've done that, I've gone to pin it to the frame and kind of work out where the folds should be. And But it kept falling down and my fingers were getting colder and colder and colder and it kept falling down again and nothing kind of was really going to plan. Um, and it was starting to lose light and well... Oh, this is causing me problems to be honest getting all this look to line up and it's absolutely freezing my hands are and fingers are freezing so i think i might call it a day put some tie through that and kind of keep it in place tackle it again tomorrow working outside in these temperatures without gloves on because it's kind of i need to better grip the material and put things in and stuff it's just been absolutely freezing out there i think it's minus six out there today um or tonight so maintaining the heat in the stove is the uh, is the crucial thing these are what i'm using these kind of fire bricks here which get really good two of them in there gets that up to 300 easily then a bit of coal in there lovely um have the door slightly ajar for when it's all kind of building up when it's all taken close that close the vents overnight happy days so um, yes, although I'm going through the coal, 25 bag, a 25 kilo bag of coal, I'm getting through that basically in two days now. So yeah, it's, uh, but anyway, it is what it is. It's freezing out there, but I've had to call it a day today because yeah, too cold, uh, light was dipping and I was just getting really frustrated with that piece of fabric. Uh, I think I've cut it slightly too small, annoyingly. So I've got loads of extra, so I'll do another one tomorrow. And I think I'll go about it in a slightly different way tomorrow. I'm going to put the turn button in at the top and then a push button directly underneath it to get the height and then do the same at the sides and then kind of pin it round a little bit. But it's hard to kind of get it so it's not creased. Um, and the only way to do that is by putting in all the fixings. But you can only put them in once, really. Otherwise, you've got holes all over the place. So... It's a bit of a trial and error, but I'll get there in the end. And then I'm hoping this one on this side would just be basically a mirror image of that. So it's worth spending the time and effort getting that thing right. I've got to sort out the corner bit. I've got to do that fold bit. And I'm either going to glue it um, or it'll glue and then sew it together. But And then I use a clamp to kind of keep it in place. But yeah it's not easy doing this i can now see why these companies charge three and four grand for these types of things because there's a lot of work that goes into it however having said that i genuinely believe this thing is going to work at the end of it i think it's going to be fit for purpose it's not going to be the most attractive pram in the world granted but um it's uh yeah it's all right i'm kind of i'm still inspired to carry on uh and uh carry on i will so i do that tomorrow morning uh, in first light obviously tonight's the football so i've got to watch that which will be fun get back to the boat it'll be nice and toasty and then uh crack on first thing in the morning oh i've got a um I've got two gifts today on the boat so firstly it was dave dropped over two boxes of kindling which is brilliant and then a subscriber max oh, bought over a box of moretti for tonight's match so uh rob and i would enjoy that so thank you very much max Right, hope you guys are warm, hope you guys are well. See you tomorrow. Take care, bye bye.